ಇದು ಇದು ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಅದಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಗುಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ನೂನ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಡೈನಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಯೂನಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಮೆಕ್ಯಾನಿಕ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ uh effect of motion of bodies on the object the effect of force on the moving bodies so far we have studied in the statics that the effect of the force on a body which is under static it's not moving so those already have covered it in earlier four chapters in the fifth units we are studying the dynamics as you know that the dynamics is classified uh, into two one is that uh kinematics and second is kinetics now as per our syllabus we are dealing with kinetics but first, first of all we should know what is kinematics and what is kinetics as already told the dynamics is related to the effect of force on a moving object so now in this case the kinematics which deals deals with the moving object with the uh, without the consideration of force or without the consideration of the cause of the force but in case of kinetics we are considering the cause the consideration of the cause of the force that is also taken into account so uh, that is the difference between kinematics and kinetics so we will deal with uh, kinetics first of all this kinetics here we are using this principles to solve the unknown factors like determination of velocity acceleration time and displacements for the object which is under motion and subjected to an external force there are three principles basically we'll study in this chapter that is one is the d alambert's principle and second is work energy method and third is impulse momentum principle so based on these three these each method is useful based on the what data we require to solve from the problems now first of all we will concentrate on g alambert's principle that is uh, how uh, the concept of that one and then we will try to solve some problems on that now as far as g alambert's principle is concerned it is based on the newton's second law the second newton's second law states that the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the impressed force and it takes place in the direction of the force that is the basic definition of the newton's second law is no we know it the same principle has been adopted by d alambert with modified concept uh, it is applied to the moving objects now what has as you know that from newton's second law f is directly proportional to m the rate of change of momentum of a object so therefore the weight of the mass of the object is m and a is the acceleration because of this force the object moves with certain acceleration velocity now it is proportional to the m a now we can adjust it in such a way that the units of the force that can be made unit uh, that can be made it equal to what the constant of pressure will become 1 and we can write it as f is equal to ma now the same principle the, the same principle d alambert has slightly written in a different form that is instead of this equation 1 he wrote it as r minus ma is equal to 0 
it is one of the very basic equation for the dynamic equilibrium of the moving object now here what is r r is the resultant force it is nothing but the force f only but i have written it as a r because a object may be subjected to a system of forces in different direction but the resultant of all those forces will be acting in one direction and in that direction only the motion will occur so therefore instead of force what you are taking the resultant force that net effect of force system we have taken into consideration that is r minus m into a mass into acceleration this term is termed as we call it as inertia forces inertia forces every object has got its own mass and any change of direction of the motion of the object will have some opposition to that that is called inertia force and this ma is called inertia force in the dl number principle now based on this any object which is moving subjected to an external force or system of force and having resultant force in the, on that object that with this inertia force the body will be under dynamic equilibrium so the, based on this this equation gives r minus ma is equal to zero where the object is under motion and is under dynamic equilibrium and is under dynamics so some force is acting on the object and it has got the inertia force supposing that because of those two the body will be some equilibrium condition as you call it, it is under motion we call it as a dynamic equilibrium the definition of this uh, principle is that the uh, the dn of principle states that the system of forces acting on a object on a body the system of force acting on a body in motion is in a dynamic equilibrium with the inner inertia force of the body with the inertia force of the body so therefore based on this concept we will be able to solve many number of problems concerned with the d l lambert's principle especially this principle is very much useful when we want to determine either the acceleration or the displacement other thing sometimes we may have to use some uh, uh, equations linear uh, kinematics based on this kinematics also certain equations are there those equations are also sometimes we may have to use those so those equations normally use at this point is that p is equal to u plus at this is one equation and uh, s is equal to ut plus half at square okay s is equal to ut plus half at square and uh, third equation is v square minus u square is equal to 2 as these are the three equations to knowing the velocity we may have to calculate acceleration or we may be knowing displacement and other parameters are required to calculate it so while solving this problem sometimes we may have required to use this equation so we will start with the problem on this dl lambert's principle that is uh, you can take up a simple problem first of all or so first i will explain you the concept of application of this uh, dl lambert's principle to the particular problem and then we may start with the some problem the example i can give from a lift which is moving that suppose if you have a lift and uh, just i am uh, giving you this one just to clarify your concept how the dl lambert principle can be applied to this so it is having tied by a string to the top and this will be under tension the cable will be always lift is tied by some cable which will pull up and down and uh, this is a lift okay and uh, the weight of the lift will be always acting downwards okay 
but I will not consider the weight of lift along with the person who is there on some person so that and this lift when it is moving downwards moving downwards what are the effect of forces will act on what are the forces will act and what is the net this one by the this uh, DLMS principle so if the lift is second case you consider the cable will be always on the tension the weight will be always acting in the downward direction and the lift is now here it is moving downwards movement and here the lift is moving upwards moving upwards okay lift is moving upwards so now first you consider this one uh, when the lift is moving downwards there is a tension in the cable there is a weight w is acting here and the direction of the motion of this one is the downward direction acceleration is also in the downward direction the inertia force will be always acting opposite to the acceleration direction of the acceleration or you can say the movement of the object as it is moving downwards the inertia force will be acting in the upward direction this is inertia force and that inertia force is nothing but mass into acceleration when the lift is moving downwards the inertia force will be acting in the upward direction okay similarly in case of this when the lift is moving upwards and the inertia force will be acting opposite to the direction as well as the direction of the movement as well as the acceleration always it will be opposite to the direction of the acceleration so therefore this is inertia force is acting downwards here here the inertia force is acting upwards now just you apply equilibrium condition dynamic equilibrium condition that on the slip what are the forces will act you will have you can develop an equation as the tension is acting upwards i'll take t as the upward and weight is weight of the lift and person everything is acting downwards i'll take it as w downwards and uh, inertia force is also opposing that any acceleration will be opposed by inertia force it is upward direction so therefore plus m a this is equal to zero we got an equation by applying all sum of vertical forces should be zero you apply equilibrium condition for dynamic equilibrium so all the vertical forces should be zero you will get this equation so i can rewrite it as m is equal to w by g substitute that t is equal to w plus w by g into a okay this i am taking this side so therefore um, weight is acting downwards is minus but is acting upwards plus if i shift this side this equation will become minus so i'll take w common from that then 1 minus a by g this is the equation you'll get where uh, whatever the total weight is acting if the lift is moving downwards the overall weight on the lift will be reduced by a factor of a by g so therefore when you design a lift also we should take into consideration the dynamic effect if you should not de design the lift uh, any supporting members simply by the weight of this lift because its weight will either increase or decrease depends on the whether lift moves up or downwards increase weight is required to be taken into consideration now this is regarding when the lift is moving downwards you will get this equation if the lift is moving up same equilibrium condition you apply here t is upwards w is downwards and inertia force is also acting downwards that is equal to zero so this will reduce to the equation w is equal to 1 minus plus a by g this equation reduced to 1 here the total weight of the lift will be added by a by g so when the lift is moving up it will not be the actual static weight plus there is additional weight due to the dynamic effect and that factor will be a by g this is how by using the dl numbers principle we will be able to solve the many problems this is just an uh, uh, concept how the inertia force is effective how we should take into consideration that i have explained now we'll take up a problem on this and just note down the problem i will uh, try to uh, take a very simple problem first one problem so that that will give us some clear idea how the pro principle can be applied okay just take down this 
a block weighing 1 kilo newton rests on a horizontal plane as shown in the i'll show it in the figure as shown in the figure a block weighing 1 kilo newton a small block weighing of 1 kilo newton is kept on the plane of floor find the magnitude of the force p a force p is applied to the block in the inclined direction and we are pushing it forward so therefore find the magnitude of the force p required to give the block an acceleration of 3 meters per second square an acceleration of 3 meters per square to the right in the forward direction the coefficient of friction between the block and the plane is 0.25 when there are two bodies there will be friction between the two bodies and the coefficient of friction between for different contact surface will be different they have given you here the coefficient of friction between these two bodies is 0.25 now take up this problem i'll uh, draw the figure of this one and then we we'll solve this problem this is a plain floor and a block is kept on that and its weight is acting downwards w that is 1 kilo newton okay 1 kilo newton and a force is applied to the block in this direction this is p it makes an certain angle with the horizontal that is 30 degree 30 degree and there is a floor at below this one and uh, the block will move in the forward directions so when you push this one the block moves in this direction direction of movement is in this directions now i want to calculate what the data they have asked you is that we have to determine p what is the force i require to apply such that the block uh, the block should have an acceleration of 3 meters per second square to the right i should apply a for certain force with the block with an angle of 30 degrees so that the block should achieve a acceleration of 3 meters per second square for that purpose how much force i have to apply here that is what is required to be worked out from this equation now first of all when you draw the uh, this block diagram i have shown you first of all you draw the free body diagram so that you can show all the forces acting on that including the friction now the weight is acting downwards on the block in this downward direction and there is a normal reaction as it is a horizontal plane there is a normal reaction always acts opposite to that as per the newton's third law as the block is moving in this direction there is a opposition by the friction between the block and the floor plane and that will be acting in this direction i call it as f f is nothing but frictional force the frictional force is always opposite to the direction of the moment so therefore it is acting in this direction and uh, these are the forces that will act on that in addition to that as per their principle the inertia force it will also oppose the opposite to the direction of acceleration or the movement of the block so therefore the block is moving in this direction acceleration also increasing in this direction the opposition by inertia force i can call it as this one i call it as ma it is very important this will be acting opposing that one this one additional force i have to take into account so that under this it will be under dynamic equilibrium so now i can first of all i need to calculate n then i have to calculate f and then remaining factors will go so to calculate this one sum of v is equal to 0 i can apply all equilibrium always you have to apply equilibrium condition as it is on time so therefore the weight is acting downwards because of that n is equal to 1 no other vertical forces are is there is there any other force there is a force p 
the component of this one is required to be taken into account. So just you can write the component of that force that I can write it as I will replace this inclined force by this P this side sin 30 is acting downward direction and horizontal component of this one is P cos 30. I will replace this force by these two inclined forces so that I can take into account all those things. Now as the weight is acting downwards, the vertical component of this force is also acting downwards. I have to add this also plus this is also downwards, this is also downwards, n is equal to plus p sin 30. This is the downward force and there is a reaction from the block that is n is equal to 1 plus p sin 30. You got that one. And if I, I want, once I know the n, I can calculate f. Mu is equal to f upon n and F is equal to frictional force is equal to mu into n. Mu is given that mu is equal to 0 0.25. I think is it correct? Just see it. Mu is equal to 0 0.25. They are given you. Substitute that one 0 0.25 into n. n is this 1 plus p sin 30. You will get F that is the frictional force which is opposing that this is equal to 0 0.25 into 1 plus sin 30 is half by 2 I can reduce to this one now I got the frictional force now you apply the dynamic equilibrium in the horizontal directions so you apply equilibrium condition dynamic I can call it as that is sum of all horizontal forces on the body should be zero as it is under dynamic equilibrium as per the DL number principle. So therefore sum of H is equal to zero you apply all the horizontal forces acting on that and equate to zero a full of P is applying this is P cos 30 is pushing in this direction I will take it as positive P cos 30 and uh, frictional force is opposing that is given minus 0 0.25 in the bracket 1 plus p by 2 1 plus p by 2 and this inertia force is also opposing ma that is also opposite direction minus m is W by G into A is equal to 0. So it is under equilibrium, dynamic equilibrium. Now this is equal to P cos 30 minus 0 0.25 1 plus P by 2 minus W is 1 kilo newton, okay, 1 kilo newton weight of the block and G is 9.81 meters per second square and A is equal to 3 meters per second square they have given you what is the acceleration required to achieve 3 meters per second square that should be equal to 0.
10, which makes a slope of 12 degree to the horizontal. It is pulled up by the plane by means of it is pulled up the plane by means of light flexible rope running parallel to the plane. I will repeat this one. A body weighing 1200 Newton rests on a rough plane inclined at 12 degree to the horizontal and inclined plane and it is pulled up by the plane by means of a light flexible rope running parallel to the plane and passing over a frictionless pulley at the top of the plane as shown in the figure. The portion of the rope beyond the pulley hangs vertically downwards and carries a weight of 800 Newton at its end. If the coefficient of friction for the plane and the body is 0 0.2, tension in the rope, you have to determine tension in the rope, acceleration with which the body moves up the plane and the distance moved by the body in three seconds. These are the three things they have asked you so that um, it's a uh, slightly different problem. You can see it. We'll do it fast. This is a horizontal plane and this is an inclined plane and then uh, <coughs> there is a block of 1000 Newton, 1200, uh, 1200 Newton is here, its weight is acting downwards, 1200 Newton is acting, this is a block on a slope, this makes an angle of 12 degree. It makes an angle of 12 degrees and there is a, some frictionless pulley is tied here and a rope is tied to this block and it passes through this frictionless pulley and it is moving downwards, air also a weight is suspended which is 800 Newton, which is 800, I can call it as this is A block, this is a B block, okay. They are under suspended system and it is on a sloping this one and once you release it starts moving downwards the movement of this block will be downwards okay and this will be moving up it moves in this direction when you release it because it is on inclined plane this is vertically downwards 800 Newton is suspended this is a frictionless pulley. Oh, they have asked us, one is they have given you friction between the floor and plane is mu is 0 0.2 and uh, first one they have asked you to determine T that is tension in the rope T okay tension in the rope and second aspect is that acceleration B is acceleration tension acceleration and third is distance S. S is equal to how much distance it moves in three seconds. How much distance it moves? This is a question mark. This is S. S is we use for any horizontal distance. Okay, D or S. So there's space equal. So therefore, in three seconds, how much distance it moves? So these are three parameters we require to work out by applying D Alambert's principle. Now first of all you show all the forces on the block. Each block you consider a free body diagram separately and then you apply the equilibrium conditions to work out. First of all, this block is moving upwards as it pulls in the upward direction. There is a rope in the tension is T and the normal reaction will be perpendicular to the plane of the slope or support. And the, I can say this one in this direction. This angle, as it is 12 degree, this angle is also 12 degree. You can just apply your geometry and you can work out that one. And uh, this weight of 12 Newton is acting downwards, and this one is acting in this direction. The frictional, as it is block moves in this direction, the frictional force will be F will be acting in this direction. 
the frictional force F will be acting in this direction. Okay. Now, by first of all, consider the free body diagram of block A. I can uh, in this only have a larger big diagram. I have drawn it. Just see it. Uh, I'll apply the conditions for this one. For block A, sum of forces perpendicular to the plane should be equal to zero to work out the n normal reaction. So therefore, n is equal to the vertical component of this 1200 Newton. I can say this is the 1200 Newton. 1200 into cos 12 degree and uh, horizontal component of this weight is 1200 sin 12 degree. Horizontal component. One is vertical component, horizontal component, perpendicular to the plane and parallel to the plane. So therefore, by applying perpendicular to the plane, n is equal to the component of this one is required to be taken into account 1200 cos 12. From that, we will get n 1200 cos 12. It works out 1173.77 Newton. 1173.77 Newtons. And from this, you work out the frictional force F. F is equal to mu into n, so mu is 0 0.2 and n is 1173.77 Newton. You will get the frictional force opposing that is 234.76 Newton. This is the 234.7 is opposing the moment of this one. Second is the other force that is acting on the opposite to the direction of motion and acceleration is Ma is acting on that, opposing that one. So that Ma, we'll write it the while, uh, if you equate all the dynamic equilibrium. And similarly, you consider for this block B also, tension is T, weight is acting downwards, okay? And as it is moving downwards, the inertia force will be acting upwards. That's all, nothing else. Now, first of all, we'll solve this one. That is, we write an equation for this one. Now, you apply for the block A, Sum of all, sum of, I'll write, sum of all forces parallel to the plane should be equal to zero. Is under dynamic equilibrium in the horizontal direction. As it is moving up, inertial force is acting downwards, friction force is also acting downwards and component weight is also acting downwards. So, it will be under equilibrium, but it is the rope is pulling in the upward direction. So, if you write down all those forces acting in the parallel to the plane, now, first of all, I can say that uh, tension is acting in the right direction. I'll take it as T positive in the cable and component of weight is opposing, that is minus 1200 sine 12 is component in the parallel to the plane is opposing and frictional force is also opposing that. Any other force other than that, frictional, this one. What about the inertia force? As the block is moving in this direction, inertia force will be opposite to that, not this direction. That is not correct. It will be as the acceleration as well as the movement of the block is in this direction, inertia should, should be opposite to that. So the inertia force is acting downwards. So therefore, weight component, frictional force and inertia all are opposing and minus Ma is equal to zero. This will relate to a one equation, dynamic equation for the block A. I will rewrite this equation, T into 1200 sine 12. I think I might have calculated here, I don't, otherwise you can directly solve it. 1200 sine into sine 12 minus F is equal to frictional force, I have calculated 234.76 minus M is equal to W by G. What is W? 
1200 newton 1200 divided by 9.81 this is w by g if you have to write and multiplied by the acceleration i don't know what is the acceleration we give it to zero so this leads to equation one from the block a similarly uh, again i will apply for the block now consider the block b which is suspended at this point now here there is no any horizontal forces in this direction is it is suspended and acting moving downwards movement is downwards and uh, all forces are acting on that those forces i equate sum of all vertical forces should be equal to zero sum of all vertical forces should be zero on the block b so tension is acting upwards i'll take upwards positive and um, weight is acting downwards w is downwards and inertia force is opposing if the block is moving downwards it will be opposing in the upward direction so therefore uh, that is minus m a so m is equal to w by g is equal to zero rewrite this equation t minus w is what 800 newton and minus m is 800 divided by 9.81 and multiplied by a the same both the blocks will move with the same acceleration because both are connected by a rope passing through a frictionless pulley now this is called equation number two if you solve equation and equation two as these two are the two simultaneous equations you solve and there is the only one unknown uh, there are two unknown two equations two unknowns one is the tension second is the acceleration here also tension and acceleration so therefore by knowing two equations simultaneous equations two unknowns can be worked out from if you solve these two equations you will get tension in the string as well as acceleration tension is 673 point 0.68 newton and uh, acceleration works out 1.549 meters per second square this is uh, I, I was able to determine tension as well as the acceleration of the block if once you keep it in this position release it the block a will start moving downwards as the block b pulls it down it will achieve a acceleration of 1.549 meters and tension in the cable will be always 673.68 now what you can do one more thing the data are got one is tension we have determined acceleration also we have determined what is the distance it moves in three seconds so for that i have to use the linear kinematic equations the linear kinematic uh, kinetic uh, kinematic equation that uh, I just I given you three equations so uh, those you might have studied in your previous levels you can use this one so that the basic equation of this one is s equal to ut plus half a t square in this equation just to substitute the parameters that is uh, s is the distance what I want and uh, u is the initial velocity for both the blocks the initial velocity is zero and question of time will not arise plus half you know the acceleration it is 1.549 meters per second square and t also you know it that is after three seconds they have told you after three seconds what is the distance it travels three i substitute and if you work out this one s is equal to you will get around 6.9711 so in 3 seconds the block moves a distance of 6.971 meters with an acceleration of 1.549 so these are problems two problems i solved today along with some explanation regarding the elmer's principle just to go through this if you have any uh, doubts or anything just you can uh, whatsapp me or call me I will try to clarify your doubts. Okay, today we will close these sessions. We will start with some more problems on this principle in the next class, and also we will start with work energy method for this one. Okay, good day.